Twelve Years a Slave was written in 1853 and is an account of the life of Solomon Northup, a free man from New York who was kidnapped and taken south where, as the book title says, he was a slave for 12 years before being rescued. This is an American classic and my copy of this was a gift from a colleague for Secret Santa last year. From a historical point of view, this was an interesting read and gives a first-hand account of what life as a slave was like. As such, it is pretty dark and brutal in parts, and it's not easy reading. Northup is very straightforward in how at times he was forced to beat other slaves, and is also balanced by also describing the times where owners were not so harsh. There are conversations and commentary on the rights and wrongs of slavery, and how good Christian folk could be part of such a system. It comes across as a pretty honest account of those awful 12 years. As interesting as the information was, I had real trouble getting engaged with it for the most part of the book. The section at the end, from when he meets the man who will eventually get things in motion for his rescue, that was quite engrossing and a real page-turner. But everything up to that point just seemed dispassionate, detached. I can't quite find the word for it. This is Northup telling his own story, but it seems somewhat monotone throughout. Perhaps as this was written not long after his escape, it was all too traumatic or something? As a reader, I couldn't sense his emotional attachment, so as a result, I found it hard to get emotionally attached myself to what it was that he was telling me. As an example, this is how the book ends. My narrative is at an end. I have no comments to make upon the subject of slavery. Those who read this book may form their own opinions of the peculiar institution. What it may be in other states, I do not profess to know. What it is in the region of Red River is truly and faithfully delineated in these pages. This is no fiction, no exaggeration. If I've failed in anything, it has been in presenting to the reader too prominently the bright side of the picture. I doubt not hundreds have been as unfortunate as myself, that hundreds of free citizens have been kidnapped and sold into slavery, and are at this moment wearing out their lives on plantations in Texas and Louisiana. But I forbear, chastened and subdued in spirit by the sufferings I have borne, and thankful to that good being through whose mercy I have been restored to happiness and liberty, I hope henceforward to lead an upright though lowly life and rest at last in the churchyard where my father sleeps. Like, dude, be more pissed off. (laughs) My frustration is not with his story, but more with his attitude of, so yeah, that happened, but it's all good now. Meanwhile, many people he left behind were still enslaved, still being whipped, still being beaten within an inch of their lives, while being worked to the bone. That final statement is a good summary of the unanimated recounting of his life story. The book is basically him listing off in chronological order things that happened to him. We get very little insight into his thoughts and reactions to each thing. So overall, this was an odd experience for me. It's an insight into an awful part of American history. But at the same time, it comes across very dry. As part of a canon of the history of slavery, it has a role, but as a standalone item, I think there are stronger accounts out there.